in much richer countries you have two three thousand refugees and there's an issue the far-right parties raised this issue about refugees but we poor countries you know who are struggling whose economy is just about getting on their feet how do we go with hundreds and thousands of refugees so it is in no one's interest that there's chaos in afghanistan and that's why i was very uh, impressed by the Islamic Development Bank's suggestions of immediate, medium and long-term ways of uh, helping the people of Afghanistan or making the economy sustainable. Uh, I would look forward to the uh, foreign ministers that you will come up with a roadmap by the end of this evening and that roadmap not only should be pushed by the OIC, by the United Nations, by the European Union, and by, of course, the United States. Because, as I repeat, chaos in Afghanistan suits no one. And finally, uh, because I have uh, this platform of the OIC foreign ministers, I would just raise two more points. One is Palestine and Kashmir. Uh, the people of Palestine and Kashmir look to us. They, they want to see a unified response from us about their human rights, about their democratic rights, rights which United Nations Security Council resolutions have given them and unfortunately not implemented. We should, on every forum, raise our voices and a unified stance. And lastly, I want to talk about Islamophobia. Unfortunately, the refugee crisis in Western countries has exacerbated Islamophobia. Islamophobia really started uh, reaching a dangerous levels after 9-11. When terrorism and Islam were connected, when radical word terms like radical Islam came, they connected somehow Islam was, was responsible for terrorism. This connection has made life difficult for people living in Western countries, Muslims living in Western countries. The man in the street in the West cannot distinguish between what is a moderate Muslim and what is a radical Muslim. So you have stuff like in New Zealand, a man walks into a mosque and shoots 50 people. It's because these, this term, radical Islam, Islamic terrorism, they have to be delinked. And secondly, the reason for Islamophobia is people in the West do not understand when our Prophet Muhammad wasallam is mocked or ridiculed or insulted, they can't understand the reaction amongst the Muslims because their attitude to religion is different to ours. So it's very important for the OIC to play its part in explaining to the Western world on forums like European Union, United Nations, their think tanks, making them understand rather than this gap growing between Muslims and non-Muslims because of inability to understand Islam, it is our responsibility in the OIC that we make them understand. Uh, we have in Pakistan formed an authority, it's called Ramatul al Alamin Authority. The purpose, the purpose is to have top m m Pakistani scholars in this authority who coordinate with Muslim scholars all over the world. And one of the objectives of this uh, uh, Ramatul al Alamin Authority is that there should be a, a considered intellectual response when things like um, uh, a, a, a cartoon appears insulting a holy prophet, peace be upon him. There should be a proper response from scholars to make them understand why Muslims react, that the love and reverence we have for our Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, because they don't understand this. 
and secondly to make them understand that a holy prophet was called rahmatul alamin he was to bring mercy for mankind he was not called rahmatul muslimin he was not just for muslims just like our god allah is god of all human beings so a prophet united human beings his whole message was of love but this is not the people in the west do not understand this there is so much propaganda against islam and unfortunately we do not have a coherent and an intellectual scholarly response to this